Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? What time is it? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> Do you guys know what time it is? It is currently, who wants to guess? <laughs> Do you guys have any idea? It is currently three, oh, just one. 3.44 p.m. on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. A little chilly, but very, very pretty, very sunny. Let's look up the weather and see who wants to guess the temperature today. You guys ready? Who can guess the temperature? It is currently 53 degrees in Indianapolis. Sunny, feels like 51, and it was actually, it's gotten a little bit warmer because when we were at brunch, it was 50 degrees. Frost advisory tonight from Monday, 1 a.m., until Monday, 10 a.m. Frost advisory remains in effect from 1 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, temperatures may fall as low as 34 will result in frost formation. This is why I'm glad that I didn't put all my plants out already because the frost could have affected Fernalicious or my beautiful palm trees. So, let me get settled in here. Alex is upstairs um, watching TikToks with little Boo Radley and he will probably fall asleep here soon. And I am going to vlog for a little bit, and then I think I'm going to take a nap this afternoon. And then I'm going to finish this uh, TV show that I was binging last night, and start another TV show. And then I think tonight, actually, I'm going to watch uh, Wait Until Dark, which is this week's pick for um, Peter's Movie Club. So, if you want to watch a movie with me every single week, go check out... Um, my Peter Does Stuff channel. The sun is coming and going, so it's gonna be, the shadows are gonna come and go throughout this video. But on my Peter Does Stuff channel, I am doing a weekly movie pick. Um, people are recommending all these movies to me, and part, like somebody recommended, recommended Pretty, they said, oh, why not Pretty in Pink? Well, the reason why not Pretty in Pink, which is actually one of my favorite movies of life, is because it's not on Tubi, I don't think. They recommended that to me, so I guess I should probably look, because if Pretty in Pink was on Tubi, I would definitely pick Pretty in Pink. Um, hold on a second. Let me see. I think I went through almost every... If it comes up, I'm going to be like, oh my god, how did that, that movie... No, it's not. They don't have Pretty in Pink on Tubi. Because if they had Pretty in Pink on Tubi, I would pick it. And um, so the movies that I'm going to pick are either going to be on Tubi or they're going to be able to be found on YouTube. So, yeah. So the Wait, Wait Until Dark with Audrey Hepburn is this week's pick for Peter's Movie Club. Actually, somebody left me the nicest comment on that channel. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find the comment. They said that they were they were like, this is so nice that you're doing this to interact with people on your channel or something like that. Hold on a second. Somebody said, love this movie. Wait Until, ni wait until Night. Uh, wait Until Dark. Uh, Turner Classic music, Movies. My favorite channel besides all the Peter Mon channels. Oh. Um... Somebody said, just finish Wait Until Dark. This was the first movie you picked that I've never seen. It was really good. Um, somebody said, watching now, can't wait. Okay. Somebody said, my mom and I watched Welcome Home, Roxy Carmichael last Sunday, and we are going to watch this week's movie this Sunday. That makes me so happy because my mom and I love to watch movies together. Thanks for, oh, thanks for putting this together, Peter. It's so much fun. P.S. I'm your age. And, oh, she talked about her mom's sobriety. So congrats to that person. I don't know if they're watching this video, but congrats to your mom's sobriety. This person said, I think this is such a wonderful and cool way to take connecting with your audience a step further. Super excited for movie night. And I love that so much because I, to be honest with you, like, I love to do anything that kind of integrates community, you know, a little bit. Um, further, furthers our cult needs, so to speak, you know. <laughs> the ongoing joke of us being a cult over here. Um... So yeah, so um, I appreciate anybody that like, you know, wants to participate in that. It just means a lot to me. I think you guys have heard by now me talk about like how much I'm like loving putting together this movie club. Anything that I'm like really passionate about, like even like the Peters Book Club and the True Crime Book Club, because I love reading so much that just like picking out the book for the following month is like so much fun for me. Like Mel and I picked the books together for True Crime Book Club, but for Peters Book Club, when I am like, going through all the books and trying to, like, I'll, I'll narrow it down to, like, five books and then three, and then I'll, like, two. And, like, this, so for this month, I had two different books picked out, and I did a video, I think I announced it, like, on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, and then, like, Monday I had done a video, and somebody commented, I said, do you guys want, like, a thriller or a cozy mystery? And somebody actually put the exact title of one of the books that I had, like, narrowed it down to. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go with that book then since somebody wants to read it. 
because that's one other person that's rated it, you know? And I love just like, I love doing, you know, reading with other people, like if me and a friend will read the same book at the same time, or watching a movie or a TV show and having like people to talk about it. That's really, to be honest with you, one of the reasons why I started on YouTube to begin with, way back in the day, the reason why I started my booktube channel was because I was watching all these booktubers that were talking about books and they were hauling books and doing reviews of books and the funny thing is, is there's a lot of, um, hey, there's a lot of booktubers that um, don't even really read that many books. Like when you go look, they'll, they'll like, they'll, they'll do book hauls and whatever, and because what, they just love books, right? But they end up reading like five books or six books a year, which I think is kind of funny. And then there's other booktubers that, or bookstagrammers or book talkers or whatever, that read hundreds of books a year. So it's, you know, and it's just, I think it's people that just have this love for books, you know? I mean, I've said many times I like buying books sometimes more than I like reading books, which probably isn't true when I get right into a book. But, um, I go on my walks recently, I've been listening to so much music, and I really want to get into Murder Road by Simone St. James and finish it. But that was really why I started on BookTube, was because it was this community of people talking about books, and I just, I had to be part of it. I loved it so much, because I love to talk about books, you know? And... Tanya and I read some of this, and at that point was when, like, the only person in my life that really read was Tanya. And so Tanya and I read some of the same books, but not all the same books, if that makes sense. Like, she reads a lot of authors that I don't read. Tanya likes really, really long books. I do not love long books. Um, Caroline and I read a lot of the same stuff, but when I started BookTube... Caroline and I weren't talking about books and things like that. And today I have Mel and Nikki and Tanya and several other people that I have met through my booktube channel and it's just and then having the book clubs and picking books and it's just so much fun for me. I love that so much. So I love doing anything as like a community, you know? And um and the other reason why I started the um the like the book clubs was because I always wanted to be part of a book club. My social anxiety really keeps me from like going to a public library or like a bookstore. I mean, I could do it, I think, today, but like back then, it was like the fear and the social anxiety really stopped me from like, I would I would hear about like, oh, this thriller book club is starting, you know, and I'd be like, oh, I should join that or whatever. And then like the, the, the thought and the idea and the scripting of all of it and thinking of what it would be like to actually walk in there was so terrifying for me. But starting like an online book club, I could do that, you know, and so, <clears throat> It, that's what I did with the book club that then became a true crime book club that Mel and I run together and then Peter's book club and I love it it's so much fun you know so yeah but anyway okay last night so anyway to the person that left the comment I don't know if they're watching the vlog they probably aren't I'll, I'll talk about it on the other channel but about saying that uh, like I hadn't even really thought of it as like <clears throat> this deeper way to connect with my audience you know but um but I love that you see it that way. Like, that means a lot to me. Like I said, like, I love anything to do with community and building community, you know? Um, I think that's why partly, like, I love cozy mysteries. Because it's, like, small communities coming together. I think it's one of the reasons, like, I was just talking to my neighbor across the street, because I want to talk about this, too, about her yard. And they haven't come out here and fixed anything or done anything with her yard. And so there's a whole long story about that that I was telling her, because I talked to the HOA president yesterday. And um, coming up with kind of a plan on how we're going to get this fixed and the other places in the neighborhood fixed. And I just love that sense of community of like, it's something that, like when I didn't have it, when I wasn't really like talkative and interactive with my neighbors, in all honesty, it wasn't something that I yearned for. Like I can't remember like being like, God, I wish I was really close with my neighbors. I just can remember there was like this like spring into summer where I was like, I don't really know a lot of my neighbors and if we're gonna live here, you know, I grew up, <clears throat> I, this was not how I, th I thought I was gonna tell you guys what I did last night <laughs> and go into this today, but this got into a deeper conversation real quick. You know, I grew up with like our, our street, our cul-de-sac, our neighborhood was very, very close. Like. All the families knew each other, all the parents knew each other, all the kids played together on the street and stuff like that. It was a community, you know? And everybody had each other's backs and everybody looked out for each other. Just on some level, you know? And my mom was really good friends with a lot of the women. I mean, up to the day that she died, she was her two of her really close friends were women that she lived on the street with. And um, they would go out to lunch like three or four times a year for each of their birthdays and stuff like that. And they were really, really close their whole lives. And 
I can remember there was like a day, I don't know if I was like talking to somebody at the pool or if it happened before the pool, I don't even remember. But I was just like, I wanna like make a concerted effort to be closer to my neighbors. Because I would go to the pool, but I wouldn't really talk to anybody unless somebody talked to me. And that's kind of how I've always lived my life as a person that's been, you know, I talk on video, but the reality is I'm very, very shy. I walk into rooms with my head down. I don't really, like I noticed it last night because I haven't really, like, I mean, ultra, I was around a lot of people and whatever, but, like, I haven't been, like, at a party setting or a dinner setting where I'm, like, with a bunch of other people, and I noticed last night that I just kind of, like, at the first part where we just were, like, sitting in this bar, <clears throat> I wasn't really saying a lot. I was just kind of, like, listening and whatever, which is kind of where I, I what I'd fall into. And then when we went upstairs to dinner, I was, like, I sat, the, I always like to sit on the end so I can get out whenever I want to anywhere <laughs> on a plane in a movie theater whatever I always have to sit on the end a little unknown fact about me but anyway we were trying to pick seats and where to sit and I had been talking to Melissa downstairs earlier and so when we went upstairs my, this other friend of mine that I hadn't talked to since we went to the restoration hardware opening and we had been supposed to get at lunch I was like I was like why don't you sit down here on the end and we can catch up and so she and her husband sat across from Alex and I and we caught up and um and that was nice. And so I was a little bit more talkative because she's somebody that I feel very comfortable. I'm like comfortable one-on-one. -on -one. It's like one in like a, everybody was like sharing the swapping stories and all this kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, but I made like, I can remember like being at the pool. And this one woman that walked by the other day, I haven't seen her. She said she was gone for like a month and a half during the winter. And she was at the pool and she would read like in the back corner and one day she said something to me and then I started asking her like what she was reading and we were talking about books and stuff like that. And that kind of opened me up to talking to other people. The thing is, is that I always take like my coffee down to the pool and I sit like on the let of like the, the pool, what's it called, I don't know. I sit on like, the, it's concrete and then it's stones around the pool. And I sit on the stones or like the first step of the pool with my feet, like on the second and third step. And, um, and so when people are like in the shallow end or whatever, they're just standing there, they're having conversations, I'll just kind of like look and listen and like look off into the wind and whatever, right? Like I'm, just, I'm listening, but I'm not like, you know, engaging. And then, I don't know, two years ago, something like that, I was like, I want to know my neighbors. And so I started talking to people. I started talking to people when they walked by and started feeling more of a sense of community. Um, and I know like almost everybody that lives in the neighborhood now that lives that walks by regularly or that I interact with regularly and things like that and it's nice and it does make a difference and it makes a difference like when you know people will say things to me like oh so and so was asking about you they haven't seen you sitting on their porch when we go away on vacation like I'll come back and it's because of the pancreatitis and because of the accident and me being like gone for periods of time and people knowing and I mean everybody in the community knows about the accident and they all know about um, like, I mean, when somebody go, is sick or goes to the hospital, like, they, everybody here knows about it. They let that know. It's not even a gossipy thing. It's a neighborly thing. And, um, I mean, after the accident and after pancreatitis, people were super, super gracious with offering rides and food and ways to help and, like, my neighbor doing our, you know, weeding and things like that. I mean, just unbelievably kind, right? And so when, you know, like, I won't show up to something and somebody will say, well, they, you know, they miss you. They want to see you. They haven't seen you since the pool, which is why I, like, kind of went to the eclipse thing the, that day. And then I had such a blast. But then, like, when I'm not out here for, like, a week, you know, people walk by and be like, I was worried. I was wondering about you. You know, like, where you were. And it's nice, you know. Or, you know, people will say, like, because a lot of people walk early in the morning when, like, Alex is leaving. And I'm not even aware of it that, like, Alex will stop and talk to them. And they'll be like, yeah, I haven't seen Alex in, like, three days. I talked to him, like, on Monday. But is he, is he like, is he home or is he on vacation or whatever? I'm like, no, he's home. He's, just, like, leaving a little bit later. And they're like, oh, I always walk at, like, 7. And, you know, it's cute. I like that. I like that my neighbors know me and I know my neighbors, you know. And... Like, we're on vacation. We always let our neighbors know, like, when we're going to be gone, when we're coming back. My neighbor across the street, he'll, like, text me and be like, hope you guys have a safe flight. Home. I mean, always. You know, hope you guys have a safe. The, before we even get to the airport on our way home from vacation, he'll text us and be like, hope you guys have a safe flight this morning. You know, before the gardener's husband. Before we, like, if we leave, you know, to go, like, fly out somewhere, he'll be like, hope you guys have a safe flight today. Have a great trip. I mean, people are so nice, you know? And, um... I love that sense of community and I feel like, you know, I lived in an apartment for so long where I knew some people to say hi to, but I didn't really, 
Like, I never hung out with them. I do know, I have friends of mine that live in apartment buildings or apartment complexes that do know, have friends that hang out with them. But I wouldn't say that that's the norm. Um, you know, like, even Tanya, I think more like, a lot of like, maybe it's because it's an older community and maybe it's because we're closer together that makes a difference, but like, you know, like, well, Caroline's pretty close with her neighbors. Like, she, well, Caroline's also the president of the HOA this year. She was the secretary, but now, excuse me, she's the president. But their HOA is nothing like ours. So, like, they only meet, like, twice a year. It's just about basically, like, the pool. <laughs> and the other thing is, okay, this is so funny, but this was, like, the big argument of Caroline's HOA last year was Caroline wants to do just either, like, simple bows around the mailbox like they all do the same mailbox for christmas okay or the holidays like a simple red bow or like some garland but apparently they one year wanted to do these like santa hats or something i can't remember what she said they were it's they're not santa hats because they're cornier than that but they like invested they did like vote on this and this is where hoas are so ridiculous homeowners associations they had to like vote on these, they're like, maybe they're sweaters or something, because it was something really funny when she told me about it. And she hates them, Caroline hates them, but you have to, like everybody in the neighborhood has to do them. Like outside of here, like they have these beautiful, like I wanted to do it for our neighborhood around here, but I couldn't find them anywhere. I looked everywhere for those wreath. If anybody knows what you're, what I'm talking about, it's bows that are specifically made for your mailbox that you just like loop around and top, like they like have this big bow on top. Because I'd love all of us to have them around here. I think it would look so pretty. Hell, I'd buy them for everybody just so we could look pretty, you know? But anyway, that was, like, the big deal. And then, like, now they're, like, talking about, they like, the pool in their neighborhood, which Caroline goes to that pool all the time and her neighbors do. They need to redo it. But Caroline's not in a condo. She's, like, in a housing neighborhood. So, like, her HOA fees are, like, really, really low. Because, like, if you live in a housing neighborhood, typically it's, like, you pay it once a year. You don't pay it, like, every month like us. Okay, so about the situation. But anyway, um... And Tanya knows some of her neighborhoods, but she doesn't really hang out with her neighbors. I, like, love... I don't know. I just... I love having... <sighs> if you live in a neighborhood where people are even say hi to you or whatever, I would, and you're any bit socially awkward or shy like me, step outside your comfort zone. Start talking to people. Say hi. Say, I haven't... I don't think I've ever met you before. I do that to people all the time that I haven't met in the neighborhood that walk by. I'm like, oh, your dog is so cute. I don't think we've met before. I'm Peter, and I live here with my husband, Alex, and our dog, Boo. Like, I always say that to people, right? And people are always friendly to me, and it took me a little while to step outside my comfort zone to do that, but then... Everybody, you see everybody that walks by here is always like, hey, how are you? You know, like, my fa well, my favorite are the the old HOA president and his wife and their dog that walk by. But there's this couple that live outside of our neighborhood. And they're probably, probably like Alex's age, like 35 or 40. And they have a stroller. And I remember, I talked about them last summer, but they still walk by and they always wave to me. And, um... They have push a stroller, and then they always have, like, a wine or, like, a truly or something at night that they're drinking when they, like, walk as a couple. And I think they're so sweet and so adorable. And they're always, like, walking, but they don't live in the neighborhood. I think they live outside in one of the houses. Um, I don't know. It just, you know, it's something that, like I said, like, I wasn't yearning for. But now that I have it and I have this relationship with my neighbors, like, it makes it... It makes my experience of living here, like, a hundred times better. Like, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, like, it's, it's magical, you know? And just, like, I get excited to walk outside. And who's going to be out there? And, you know, she was outside working in her garden. And I, like, went across the street. And we were talking about the yard. And I was telling her about talking to the HOA president. And then I was asking her what she was having for dinner. She was asking me what we had for brunch. And I was telling her what we had for brunch today. And then, because um, she knows we go to Patashu on Sundays. And... She was uh, she was asking about the restaurant we went to last night, and then I said, "What are you guys doing for dinner tonight?" And she said, "Soup," and she's putting what she said cube steak in it because um, it's some kind of it's like mushroom soup or something. But she's putting cube steak in it for her husband because he loves cube steak and whatever kind of soup it is. And she's gonna make some bread. And I was telling her about my how my aunt used to always make my mom like a crock pot thing of like big. Thing of soup and like homemade bread, a loaf of bread, and bring it over. My mom would make it last like throughout the week. And we were talking about that, and we were talking about this, and we were talking about how we both love fall, but like spring, there's a lot of rain. So summer, we're loving summer. And we can't, and I was like, you know, for me, I said, I get to, you know, during the winter, I'm inside a lot. And I said, but in the spring and summer, I get in the fall, I get to inter Oh shoot, I just spilled this coffee everywhere. It's French vanilla today. Not my favorite, but it's not bad. 
and then I just, it's fall, so I just spilled it. I was saving it for the vlog. Hold on. But I was telling her, I said, you know, when it, during the winter, I'm inside a lot. So during the spring and summer, it's so nice because I can be outside and I can interact with you guys and I actually see people. You know, like Alex is gone all day at work. And so if I'm inside all day, you know, while he's at work, I mean, that's, it's just like me and Boo Radley and it's a lot. But out here when people are walking by, even if it's just somebody walks by and they go, hey, how are you? Or they stop and they talk for two or three minutes. Like that's human interaction. And I do think human interaction makes a huge difference to your mental health. I mean, it really, the last years of like getting excited to see certain neighbors and stuff, has just, it's made a huge difference for me. So if you're in a position like me and you don't really know your neighbors, get to know them, you know, and get involved and all this kind of stuff. Like I think I am gonna try to put some stuff together this summer. I'm actually thinking about I have a couple neighbors that like to read, but they don't like to read the things. So, like, in the in the book club that already exists, um, they read, like, either romance novels from, like, the 80s or very serious novels. And so, I'm thinking about starting a book club and doing it outside and having it last, um, doing it, upso up, like, outside by the pool in the cul-de-sac and making it doing it like one um like Friday night a month like for two hours and like everybody bring something between like the summer and Halloween would be the last one and we would read all thrillers don't you think that would be so fun and then next year if it went well we start in the spring even if it was just like four of us I think that would be so fun and just bring your lawn chairs and sit up there you know I think that would be so much fun so I'm thinking about doing that the water aerobics thing, I can't get enough people interested in doing it. I would actually teach water aerobics if I could get enough people to teach. I talked to her about it. She's like, take it over. She's even, I don't think she thinks she's doing the, um, somebody said she's not doing, I, and then I asked her, and I can't remember what she said about it, about doing the, what do you call it, the recreation or whatever her, her job title was. Well, part of the money was, or part of the problem was the money because, she had to pay for everything herself because nobody in this neighborhood would give any money for it, you know, which I think is sad. I told her, I said, I would. I said, each house in here gave $10 for a year. And she was like, oh, that would totally fund. That'd be like five, $600, you know, for the whole year of us doing recreational stuff. Because when they do meals and stuff, they do pitch-ins. But anyway, say hi to your neighbor. But just even in the real world. I think if we could be friendlier and say hi to people and whatever, you know, my fear, my social anxiety, like always kept me from that. And I can't even say that like, it was, you know, like, well, I always have to make the first move. Somebody else should come up to say hi. Because even when people would say hi to me in like public, I'd be like, hi, you know, whatever. Like we were at Patashu today and there was this girl when we walked in, she was really cute and really sweet. And um, she was waiting for her boyfriend and she was like waiting posed by the door. And she looked at Alex and I, we both had like hoodies on when we walked in. She's like, I love you guys. And you're like, she said matching hoodies. They were not matching by any means, but she was like, you guys look so cute, and you're a little matching. Us. We were like, thanks, and she was so sweet, but like at first when she said it, I was just kind of like, like I, like when anybody kind of like makes eye contact with me, I'm like, I'm still not good about that, you know, in like social settings, like I'm still like, oh my God, you know, she was so sweet, and she was so nice, and so like we sat down, and then I got up to go get coffee, and I like, she was like two tables over for us, and she was waiting for her boyfriend to come in, and I said, I'm sorry if I was rude to you early. She's like, oh no, not at all, and um, she was real sweet about it, but like I, I feel like I have to do that because I feel like so kind of caught off guard when people talk to me in, in public sometimes when I'm not, you know, like prepared for it and whatever. I'm still like that awkwardly shy kid that is constantly like, you know what I mean? Like, um, and I'm trying to get better at that and I am. So last night we went to Commission Row for Aaron's birthday and it was Aaron and her husband, Eric. Melissa and Jason, who, so I used to work with Eric, and then I hooked Aaron and Eric up together, which is so funny, and then, and now they're married, and Melissa and Jason, and then two of our other friends, and then Aaron's cousin and her husband, and it was, so it was five couples, and so we started downstairs, Jason arranged the whole, like, dinner thing, I thought Melissa did, but it was Jason that got, like, the restaurant, Alex had been there, he actually went to the opening of it, like, a month ago or whatever, two months ago. 
And it was supposed to be like the speakeasy thing. Like you go down, like they take you downstairs like this door you have to knock on to get in and all this kind of stuff. But the whole place to me, everybody was like, isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? I mean, it was beautiful. The window, it had these floor to ceiling windows that overlooked like the downtown like ice stadium and Lucas Oil Stadium and all that kind of stuff. But like I was sitting to my back to that so I couldn't see any of it. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful restaurant. It kind of reminds me of like a steakhouse in a hotel lobby, if you want to know the truth. That's how I felt about it. I, did, I wasn't that wowed by it, in all honesty. It was pretty, but I mean, it was... I like, like, artsy, eclectic restaurants. That's what I like, you know, that are small and kind of different, whatever. This was like a steakhouse. <laughs> it was like, it just, to me, it was... And the menu was actually really great. The service was fantastic. The woman... So, Erin has seen, like, 300 Dave Matthews shows. She's, like, obsessed with Dave Matthews. And so, Melissa had a cake made at Taylor's Bakery that had Aaron and Dave Matthews' face on it. It was so cute. I didn't know that. And so, when they brought it out, like, they gave... So, Alex and I took the cake down there and gave it to them. So, when they brought the cake out at the end... We were, like, the last ones there, too. When they brought the cake out, the, our server, she was so sweet. She was so nice. And she was, like, asking Aaron all these questions. And she's like, I love Dave Matthews, too. So, they were going back and forth about Dave Matthews and stuff like that. Yeah, Aaron seen, like so many shows she like and like Eric now goes all but she's been doing that for years before she met Eric and so um so yeah so they were uh so that was last night and it was fun they had the uh menu actually had lots of vegetarian options on it which was really sweet because Jason was like I asked him if they had a lot of vegetarian options and so when she came to me because I was like one of the last people that ordered she said so I said, can I get a wedge without bacon? And she goes, you must be the vegetarian. And I go, yeah. And she goes, he said that there was a vegetarian in the group, but nobody's ordered vegetarian yet. And I said, okay, can you kind of help me a little bit? And they actually had on the menu a cauliflower steak for $27, <laughs> okay, with no sides. And I was like, how, how big is it? She goes, how hungry are you? I go, I'm hungry. Like, I've been, like, eating healthy and trying to lose weight. And she goes, okay, the, the cauliflower steak's not it. And I go, why? And she goes, it's good. She goes, but it's just small. It's a small little cauliflower steak and you don't get any sides with it, you know? And I was like, okay. She goes, it's really delicious. She goes, but if you're hungry, and I was like, I'm hungry. Like, I was, I'm kind of saving this meal to, like, you know, not eat healthy necessarily. And so, I ended up getting, um... So she was like, well, I would pick some sides. And I was like, what's your favorite side? Because I was like, I really, I don't know why I was, I've been thinking a lot about my mom and my aunt lately, but I was really like hungry for a gratin potatoes. And they had a gratin potatoes. And next to it, it said like, they had like VG, like vegan and vegetarian stuff on there. And so they, and they had the gratin potatoes and they were vegetarian. And I was like, how are the gratin potatoes? And she's like, they're delicious. And she's like, you know, I can ask the chef to cook up, like, you know, a pasta dish and, like, throw in some... I was like... Because when they do that, it's always, like, broccoli, which is great and all that kind of stuff. But I wasn't hungry for that. I was like, no. I was like, what's your favorite side? She goes, the macaroni. It was French onion soup, macaroni, and cheese. And she's like, it's the best. She's like, but because of the French onion soup, it doesn't make it... It makes it not vegetarian. So what I can do is I can have him go in there and whatever piece makes it she was gonna have him not put that in there i was like that would be great because the macaroni and cheese is delicious and it was delicious so i got i got from my main course macaroni and cheese and the au gratin potatoes alex had like two bites of the macaroni and cheese and i had like the rest of the macaroni and cheese it was like a small dish it wasn't huge the salad the um the wedge salad it came in like this circle and like in the middle <clears throat> was the dressing then you cut it all up and it had like cherry tomatoes and onions on it and stuff like that it was delicious um the wedge shallow was delicious the macaroni and cheese was delicious i wouldn't say it was the best i'd ever had but it was delicious the all grown the all grown potatoes <laughs> i know somebody's gonna laugh about how i say that i finished those actually last night while i was watching tv but they were good too i wouldn't say anything was like the best i'd ever had but it was good and um alex got <laughs> i thought he was gonna get a steak because they had like all these steaks like Jason got this ribeye that was, like, huge. I thought Alex was going to get a steak, but he got the Wagyu burger instead, and he said it was good. The Caesar he got was, like, a Caesar salad, but it was made on, like, arugula and stuff like that, and he hated it. He, like, he didn't even eat it. He was like, I don't want any of this. And so he got the uh, Wagyu burger, and then, and he said it was really, really good. And then he got french fries. The french fries were bomb, because I had a couple of their french fries. Um, yeah, and then we had the cake. And Alex doesn't eat chocolate. He doesn't really like chocolate cake. So I had a piece of chocolate cake, a very thin piece of chocolate cake, but it had Taylor's Bakery frosting on it. And I totally, my, my Aunt Kathy used to always get birthday cakes from Taylor's Bakery 
Um, when I was a kid, Taylor's Bakery is where we get the dinner rolls, but it's like this little local bakery here. And Melissa loves it too. So, oh, there's Lassie and her mom. They're walking on the other side of the street. She's not even looking over here. But anyway, um, there she is. Hey! The camera stopped while I was uh, waving and saying hi to Lassie and her mom. Um, was I going to say, okay, so I had a piece of cake. Then Alex was like, you could tell he was kind of like looking around like, there's only chocolate cake and I don't eat chocolate cake. So then they brought out the dessert for her for her birthday, which was like this biscotti thing. And so she was like, Alex, I'm going to have the cake so you can have that. So she gave it because they were sitting right next to each other. It was really fun. It was good to see everybody. We were there forever. We got there at 730 and we left there at like... It was like 11.15 or something when we left there. I was so tired. I was tired. I was like falling asleep taking a shower. I was like in the shower last night getting ready and I was like falling asleep. By the way, yes, I wore the same black sweater I always wear. But I did not wear the white shirt underneath it. I actually wore the Brooks Brothers shirt that I said I was going to wear. And I was like, when we were on our way downtown, I was like fixing my hair in the, in the, um, uh, in the mirror, and I was like, I said to Alex, I was like, this is not the moment. And he was like, what is not the moment? I got this look, this is not the moment. He goes, he goes, what do you mean? Because I love that one. <laughs> when, uh, what's, well, I can't think of her name. God, Kenya Moore. I love when Kenya Moore says she is the moment. So I'm like, this is not the moment. And he's like, what do you mean? I go, I don't know what I was, I was going for, what look I was going for. I don't know, like, 50 year old fashion designer like looking chic with jeans pulled up I go, but I feel very like dad in this like I, my uncle Dave was like who came to mind and Alex is like I think you look really nice um but yeah I wore this like uh like red and white or burgundy and white stripe it's just like a business shirt it looked button down color business shirt with that black sweater over it and then I wore jeans and I cuffed them and um I wore my black oxfords last night it's boring. I mean, it was a boring outfit. It was not exciting. It was not the moment. It was It was not the moment. <laughs> Nothing that I really wear is really that exciting. Sometimes I feel like it, though, but that's my new saying now. Everything's the moment. <laughs> Are you the moment? She's not the moment. <laughs> So yeah, so we did it last night. I said to Alex, I said, are you sad that you're not going out with all your girlfriends tonight and staying out till four o'clock in the morning? He goes, I am so tired. I cannot wait to get home and get in bed with Boo Rathley. I go, you are getting old, Alex. He goes, I know, I'm so tired. So we came home. Well, by the time we got home, it was too late for me to lay down for a nap. <laughs> I mean, it was like 11.45 when we got home. I couldn't lay down for a nap, right? And so we got Boo Rathley, took him out, got him his medicine and all that kind of stuff. Who is walking down here being so, hey. Oh, they're talking about my patio. They're comparing it to somebody else. I don't think it'd be so, they're point they're pointing my table and stuff like that. But anyway. Um speaking of the table, we pulled into the garage today after brunch. Alex goes, What are all these boxes? And I go, Well, two of them are pool things. That he goes, Are all these candles? And that's what he said to me. <laughs> are all these candles? Yeah, they're all Goose Creek candles. Actually, the bottom, and I have to replace the Goose Creek candles because the cookie one that I was, no, the pine one that I was burning, it's dead. It went out last night. Like, I got burn it, burn it, burn it way down. It's, like, gone. So, and then the autumn leaves one, it's dead, too. It went out last night. I, by dead, I mean, like, there's no more, like, even liquid in the very bottom of them. So, I got to replace those two candles for tonight. I'm actually going through candles quite a bit. So, the Goose, Goose Creek candles are at the bottom. I need to bring them inside and put them in there. But I've got, like, a bunch of candles I have to go through and put inside. That's going to be this week. I'm going to do this. Oh, who is walking down there? Oh, it's my favorite neighbors, but she's not walking with him again. This is like her fourth day in a row that she hasn't been walking with him. Whenever I say that, I always think of that, like my neighbor crosses the street. Like when I don't see her husband for a while, I think of that movie Rear Window. Like they kill them and something like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, because you think about those things when you live in neighborhoods like this. But anyway, we pulled in. Alex goes, what are all these boxes? Because <laughs> our garage is so small. And I go, well, those are pool things that I ordered that I'm going to do a haul. i got to show them with. But even if I take them out of the box, there's nowhere to put them because we keep all that pool stuff in the garage anyway. So I said, those are pool things. And I said, and those are tables. He goes, tables? <laughs> tables? <laughs> Reminds me back in the day when my ex and I, our friend Scotty, went to go eat at that Loon Lake Lodge place. And... The girl, I asked, this was before I was a vegetarian, I asked for more bacon on my cheeseburger. And she goes, more bacon? 
like I was the heaviest person in the face of the earth. I would ask, how dare you actually ask? I mean, there was like one, I got a bacon cheeseburger. There was like one piece of bacon on there. I go, can I possibly have more bacon? More bacon? Hey. Where is she at today now? We have company at the house. Oh, yesterday was too cold. Now you have company. <laughs> right? Um, more bacon. But anyway, I, t I told, told Alex, I said, they're tables. He goes, tables? I go, they're tables I have to put together for outside. Like this metal table. Oh, I now have a black faux wood rectangular square. I don't know if it's a rectangle or a square, so I say rectangular square, which makes no sense whatsoever. It's just, it's not round. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Table that has a little, like, thing, ledge underneath it. That's going to go here, and then I have a new TV table. TV. Well, this is not really a TV table. It's like you can see. It's like a TV tray kind of deal, you know, but it's a different one because this one's warped. Well, first of all, on the ground, it has to sit at this exact place or it wobbles back and forth. But the other thing is you can't really see it even if I took the camera and I showed you. It's been sitting out here for so long. It's been sitting out here for two years because Alex brought it out here for me after the accident. Because I would get up real early in the morning because I went to bed so early. My back was in so much pain that I had to sit up in a chair. I think that's why I started sitting out here so much. Was that I had to sit up in a chair that like was straight up. That was comfortable for me. Because I had to wear that huge thing after the accident too. For like the first couple months. That huge gear. And so I would come out here. I mean I got up so early in the morning. And um, would make a cup of coffee and I would come out here. I can remember I like had this thing. Which I'm not sure if I'm going to keep on using. But I would put my phone up against it and I would FaceTime like Valerini and Caroline and stuff like that because I was up so early and they were the only people that I knew that were up that early. Um, but Alex brought this table out here for me so I could read and put my coffee out here and have my iPad and stuff out there for me. So I bought it years ago at Walmart and we never really used it. Well, I've used it so much that I need a new one because now it's kind of like warped like this a little bit. The plastic is warped from like the storms and the snow and stuff like that. So I got a new one. I hope it's similar to this. We'll see. And it's in the garage, and then the table's in the garage. But I'm not big into assembly. Like, I don't like to assemble things. So I hope that there's not. I'm thinking about doing a Peter Does Stuff video assembling the table that's going to go here. But I will also say this. So, like, the weather this week is supposed to, like, gradually improve and get nicer and nicer and nicer. Listen to those birds. I love those birds, the spring and summer. So the weather's supposed to, like, progressively get nicer. My neighbor said it's supposed to be 80 by this weekend. So tomorrow it's 65. Oh, then Tuesday it's 59 again. Oh, let's go down. Wednesday is 57. Thursday 63. Friday 67 and rain. Saturday 75. Sunday 77. I don't see anywhere where it's supposed to be up to 80 again. Uh, or up to 80. Monday 74, 75, 75, 73, and 72, 73, and 72. So it's going to be in the low 70s. But by next weekend... Upper 60s, well, Friday is supposed to rain all day. Showers early becoming a steady rain later in the day. That's Friday. So Saturday, maybe, I'll put the tables together. And then the first, the weekend, the first of May, like the fourth and fifth, I'll probably do the mulch out here. I was like looking and like some of the weeds are growing back, but it's really not growing. The weeds are really not growing that back that bad. Now, I'm going to have to like halfway through the week come out here and weed some of this. I was asking my neighbor across the street about, I was like, people in the vlog were saying that I'm not a master gardener and I should use the, the weed cloth. And she goes, well, is it? And I said, it's like a gauzy material. And she says, you can use it if you want. <laughs> I was like, okay. I said, well, people are telling me that I'm not a master gardener because you are. She says, well, I don't get a lot of weeds over here anyway because I have so much planted. So I don't get a lot of weeds because it's a lot of flowers and plants that come up. She's like, that's why I wanted you to do more hostas because then you wouldn't get as many weeds and you could just fill the spaces with mulch. You get it? And I was like, yeah, that's what you said last year. She goes, but the, the, the hostas just aren't that big yet. And I was like, okay. So she said, um, you can do the cloth. She goes, if you're going to do it, I would, you know, the plastic, once you, the mulch comes up, she goes, looks horrible. And I have some of that plastic over here and it does look horrible because whoever lived here before my mom or she, if somebody, she did it, I don't think my mom would have ever done it because I don't think she was not a master gardener. <laughs> Let's just put it that way, okay? 
Um, so I don't know who laid it down there, but when I said something about the gauze, she goes, I, weeds grow right through that. She goes, you can put it down. So if somebody is, whatever you have, if it's not plastic, whatever you are suggesting to me, weed cloth, can you tell me what brand to buy and, you, and I will buy it and put it down? So if it actually works. Cause then I asked her about, I was like, well, Tanya told me uh, to use the, the Epsom salt or whatever it is and the vinegar and the Dawn. And she says you have to be very careful with that. And I go, why? And she goes, because it can kill everything else. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, it could kill your hostas. And I said, well, she said it would just kill the weeds. And she goes, you have to be very careful about it. She said, years ago, we used to have, what's the word I'm looking for? It starts with an H, plants. What's the H word that means plants? Why can't I think of what, you guys, everybody knows what I'm talking about out there, but I can't think about it. But anyway, that kind of vinegar, it was just for vinegar that like to do that kind of stuff for plants or whatever. Anyway, so she's like, or you could just pull the weeds. <laughs> that was her hint at saying just pull the weeds, right? So that's probably what I'll end up doing. But anyway, I wore this sweatshirt today to brunch, and Alex was like, I really like that color sweatshirt. This is one of my new Abercrombie. You can see how they're kind of like too big on me. I don't have a t-shirt underneath this, so. But anyway, he was like, I really like the color of that hoodie, and I was like, thanks. So, um, but I don't feel like a moment. <laughs> I don't feel glamorous, glamorous or anything today in this. I don't feel like I'm the moment. <laughs> I just want to be the moment. Just once in my life, I just want to be the moment, you know? So, it, ah, so anyway, um, okay, back to last night. So, we came home and got Boo Rally settled. Alex went right to bed. And um, I was like, okay, I can either stay up and watch some shows or I can go to bed. And I was like, no, I'm just going to stay up. So, stayed up, came out here, did my prayers and meditations, went inside, lit a bunch of candles, got everything ready, and um, made some coffee and had a cup of coffee because I was dying for a cup of coffee. And um, I watched... So, I was halfway through episode two of Fallout. And so, I've got two episodes left. There's eight episodes total. So, I watched... I, three, four, five, six. I watched four and a half episodes last night. And they're about an hour each. It's good. It's really good. It's a little slow in some areas. Um, I mean, I don't think, unless something catastrophic happens in episode seven and eight, I don't think it's going to be the show that, like... Like, when I started it, I was like, oh, I, I'm going to have to tell Alex he's going to, like, love this show. I don't know that he's going to love the show, honestly. Like, I think he'd be like, it's okay. Um... Now that I've watched more of it, it's slow. It, like, drags on. I feel like it's going to be, like, a better second season than a first season. The first season's, like, explaining a lot. So if it gets renewed for a second season, I think the second season's where a lot of action's going to happen. Um, I mean, there's a lot of action in the first season, too. There's a lot of, like... I mean, it's... It's super... It's sci-fi and futuristic, but not at the same time. It's kind of, like, old old 50s kind of stuff. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about if you watch it. Um... It's more of like, once you get halfway through it, of like figuring out, like somebody's lying about something and there's some huge cover up. It's almost kind of like, when you're watching it, you're like, was there never like a war? Was there never like nuclear bombs dropped? Was, did this never happen? Was the whole thing just like this hoax? Like you're kind of like wondering it. I mentioned it enough in my videos and I know enough people have watched it that nobody is saying anything that I feel like there's some colossal surprise at the end. Because usually when I mention a show, like, I got a couple comments from people that are like, oh, I watched the first epi episode, I'm have to go back and watch it because now that you're talking about it. Or that. But, like, I got a couple comments, people were like, you need to watch Fallout, it's really, really good. And now that I've talked about it two days, in a, three days in a row, nobody's really said anything about it. And I'm like, okay, so is there some huge, like, I feel like there's gonna be in the eighth episode some, like, huge, like, secret that comes out. Cause it's kind of leaning towards that a little bit. Um, but it's good, it's a little, it drags a little bit. It doesn't drag like some shows do, do but, um, it's cute. I feel like it's interesting because it's kind of, it's made for, it's very com much comes across as like a family show, but there are a lot of really like inappropriate, well not I mean if you're an adult, they're not inappropriate. There's a lot of sexual jokes in it. Um, like a lot of sexual jokes about like <laughs> the beginning part, it's like screwing around with your cousin and stuff. And then there's like, but not like 
I mean, it's there's a lot of sexual jokes in it. And then there's kind of like a lot of other jokes about other stuff that, I mean, it's, it's funny because it's like a video, it's based on a video game, but, um, which that doesn't surprise me because I know that there's a lot of adult material in video games, but this is, this is not like a kid show at all. It's not like a kid show at all. Um, I mean, I think kids could watch it. Like, my parents, when I was growing up, they would have given a shit if I watched it or not, right? But, like, I mean, there's nothing, like, the violence isn't gratuitous to the point of being, I mean, it's super, it's science fiction violence. It's not, like, horrible, you know what I mean? But there is violence in it and some cussing, but not a lot. Um, but I was just kind of surprised by some of the jokes. I'm a little bit, some of them I'm kind of like, oh, I don't, <laughs> that doesn't really fit with the character. Like, Anyway, so you'd have to watch it to understand, but, um, but you know, I was having this thought last night, it was interesting, as I was, like, getting my coffee and whatever, wa getting ready to watch this, that, like, I feel like there's several shows now, or big movies, well, there are, I mean, it's just, like, goes without saying, right, that are based on, like, the TV show on HBO, um, The Last of Us was based on a video game, and then Fallout, and there's, like, probably, what, 20 to 100, like, movies or TV series that have come out in, like, the last 10 years that are, like, really, like, well-known and are based on movie or based on video games, and I was thinking about this. It's interesting, like, video games today, of which I don't play, the tripod fell. I'm having a hard time getting it to stay up. And this is the new tripod. Somebody said, well, will you get a new tripod? This is the new tripod. Um, so I've never played video games really. I mean, I did when I was a kid. I played video games and stuff like that. I, just, I don't dog video games. Like, hey, I have friends of mine that like love them and play them. Alex did for a long time. Um, I just, it's never really been my thing. But the thing I was thinking about was, it's so interesting is that video games today are like the movies and the TV shows are being made. So it's like how, how movies, there's like the book to movie or book to TV adaptation back in the day. There's now like the video games game adaptation, you know, um, which I think is great, but I think it's, you know, kind of funny. So anyway, I watched four and a half episodes of Fallout last night, and then I was like, I'm going to go to bed a little bit early and get a long night's sleep. So I went upstairs and I took Boo Radley out. He didn't really want to go out because it was like cold and kind of windy out last night, but I, he went outside and did his potties. I got him some treats, took him upstairs. Fill the humidifier, that's one of the last things I do before I go to bed, is fill the humidifier with water, so, um, and I got all, I washed our blanket, well, not our comforter, but the blanket on top of the comforter again yesterday, so it was all, like, smelling good and, uh, clean, and I, um, got under the covers, and, yeah, it was nice, so, I, since I have, like, the candles burning in the house, when I, like, blow them out at the end of the night, the night, the house smells like, cookies and autumn leaves and stuff like that, so I was going to bed. But anyway, um, I fell asleep pretty quickly last night. I've been, like, having... It was so funny because I've been having, like, deep dreams, like I said, like, really bizarre, vi vibrant dreams. And we went to brunch today, and Alex got... He did not get... Well, he didn't get his normal today at brunch. So I got a gluten-free waffle. I feel like this is the second week in a row that I got it. It was fantastic. Um, the gluten-free waffle is actually, I know it sounds like it's not, but it's actually healthier than an omelet with a, with a bagel. So, I got the gluten-free waffle, and then I had, um, a cup of coffee, which, I mean, still a cup of coffee. This is French vanilla. Did I ever say what it was? Yeah, not my favorite, because I started spilling it. Um, and Alex did not get... The soup, because what he's been finding out is he gets like a bowl of the tomato artichoke soup or the turkey chili. Well, the turkey chili is seasonal, so maybe it's gone now and it's back to artichoke, or tomato artichoke, I don't remember. But anyway, he gets a bowl and then he eats that. And then the Cuban comes and he's not hungry for the Cuban, so he ends up taking it home. Like he'll eat like two bites of it and then take it home. So today he didn't, and like I think last week too, he didn't get soup. He just got the Cuban, but today he got toast. He was like, can I get some toast with butter? She like looked at him like he was crazy. And um, our server was our friend that's like been our friend for a long time tonight. So we got to like, or for a long time. And so we got to catch up with her and stuff and all this, hearing about her night yesterday. She had like a crazy day yesterday. We're talking to her about her husband and her kids and stuff like that. But anyway, so I look, she looked at Alex and I was like, you're getting toast. And so when she walked away, I said, why toast? And he goes, I had a dream about it last night. I go, you had a dream about toast last night? He goes, you had a dream I was eating toast last night. And I was like, okay, we're both having weird dreams. What is going on? So, um, so yeah, so he got the Cuban and he got toast and that was that.
And then after brunch, we stopped at the gas station because I have like four Diet Dr. Peppers left. And so I got like a 12 case or 15 case or whatever it is of Diet Dr. Pepper, I think a 12, 12 case. And Alex got um, some Cokes. He got like a case of Cokes and I got like, because I'm not drinking as much as I did. I'm actually drinking quite a bit of coffee right now. Like I'm going through those K-Pods like nobody's business. Oh my God, look at her, she's so sweet. Okay, oh, hey. um, the little dog is so cute. Um, she like put up her hand like that. I was like, wait a minute, she was walking by. Um, so many dogs that walk by remind me of little Tukey. Little Tukey, Tukey Tucker, stands, little Tucker. Pee Pee's birthday was the other day. He would have been 18 years old. Little Pee Pee. All these pictures constantly are coming up, like on my iPad. Like at the end, it'll put up like, it, you know how it puts, like if you have an iPad, you'll know what I'm talking about. I think iPhones do it too, but I don't know how, but anyway, it puts up like, a scrapbooks, like it puts your pictures in a scrapbook that you don't put them in, but it'd be like Christmas is through the years, or you know, Miami through the years, or Mexico through the years. But it's like dog pictures 2021, dog pictures 2020. And then I watch, I look at them, and I just get like so sad thinking about like Tucker and Pee Pee being gone. And you know, I'm so grateful that Boo Radley is still here, but and he's doing so well. But I miss those little guys so much. Our house was so full, you know, with so much like sound and they were just run all over the place and they were a little wolf pack, those three, you know? They were so sweet. So anyway, um, see, I didn't stay up too, super late. Well, not for me. I went to bed, like, it was like 4.45 or something like that, which isn't super late. And I fell asleep pretty quick last night. I was very comfortable in bed. And then, um, got up today and we went to brunch. Kind of took our time getting ready today, in all honesty. <laughs> like, brushed my teeth. <laughs> and like, oh, that looked bad. I, like, brushed my teeth and then I, like, washed my face. I did, like, the Tatcha, like, the, um what do you call it, exfoliator and all that kind of stuff. And I put on my lotion. I was like, so, I was like, it took me so long to wake up today. I was so cozy. I almost like, it's so funny because so many people are commenting. So many people have left such nice comments about me vlogging so long, like in a row. Um, I really, really appreciate that. It keeps me, it keeps me motivated. It keeps me inspired to keep on vlogging. Um, hold on just a second. Do, 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 do. By the way, a lot of people are telling me that they are getting unsubscribed unknowingly to this channel. Like, I've gotten comments about that from quite a few people. Um, I don't know what that's about, but just make sure that you're still subscribed to the vlog channel. Um, just to make sure. So, hold on a second. Oh, Cauliflower said, you accompanied me to the grocery store today. I was able to get through in 30 minutes. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Um... Somebody asked me, did anyone else watch the new jo Joey Graceffa video? Also, I guess the time was 5.01, so close. That was Cookie Momsta. Yes, I watched the Gr Joey Graceffa video with Daniel Prada, and that is my drama video tomorrow. You are trying to get ahead of the drama. You are the drama. I am the moment. <laughs> Cookie Momsta, that's a cute name. Cookie Momsta, she is the drama. I am the moment, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Alejandro said my guess at the time was 412. Well, not that far, not that close. <laughs> you guys are so funny to me. Jamie said, damsel was surprisingly good. Okay, Tia loved that. She DM'd me last night about that she's gonna work with Alex or something like that to get on her. She said it in a comment and then she DM'd me. I watched with my parents and wasn't interested originally. I'm currently watching Fallout, The Gentleman, and join both of them. Okay, so I want to watch, The Gentleman looks good too, but I also, on Apple TV, I want to watch Sugar with Colin Farrell, but I'm going to wait till the whole thing's out. Palm Royale has three more episodes. Sugar has three more episodes, and I'm going to watch those. I also want to watch Ripley. That is the Patricia Highsmith, based on the Patricia Highsmith novels about the town of Mr. Ripley. That's on Netflix. It's all in black and white. It looks fantastic. Okay, we're going to go in here. Look. This video, this vlog is sponsored, not sponsored by Tia. 
And Tia, we are going to go in and we are going to look at Damsel right now for her. Here it is. Okay. Damsel. It's got Angela Bassett in it, I think. Okay. It's got Millie Bobby Brown, Ray Winstone, Robin Wright, Angela Bassett, Nick Robinson. Um, it's directed by Juan Carlos Fresnadilla. And it's a maturity rating of PG-13. Sequences of strong um, creature violence. <laughs> See, right there's why I don't want to watch it, because I already know it's going to be one of those kind of, like, action and bloody images. Okay. Okay, I don't... Here's the thing. I have never even seen The Princess Bride. I know that probably surprises people, but I've never seen The Princess Bride. That should probably be a video for my Peter Dustoff channel, shouldn't it? I don't love these, like, fairy tale deals, okay? No, no offense to you. Like, this is the thing when people recommend movies to you, and they're like, oh my god, you should watch this movie. I love this movie. When people say that, like, I'm not somebody that, like, if I recommend a book to you, and you end up not liking that book, I'm not like, well, pff, you don't know a good book. You know, or if I recommend a movie to somebody, what I've realized is that, like, they're, like, I was talking about Stacy yesterday, and she messaged me, she commented and said that she was gonna DM me some books. What I've realized is that in my life, there are very few people that love the exact same TV shows as me, or the exact same movies as me, or the exact same books. That is, and that's not a problem, right? Like, we all like what we like. I don't like fairy tale shit. I just don't, okay? I don't, like, I don't, I've never wanted to watch uh, back in the day that Once Upon a Time, like, I don't, like, none of that stuff, like, I don't enjoy those kind of movies. My husband, he loves that stuff, right? That's why we don't watch that stuff together. You know, he'll be like, do, I'm gonna watch this, do you wanna watch, Melissa, Mal Maleficent, I've never seen that. I, I think I've seen maybe parts of it. I've never, I don't like those kind of movies. It's why, to this day, I haven't watched Game of Thrones, you know? It's on my list, because everybody says it's so good. Here it is. When her fairy tale wedding ends, oh, I guess it's not, she not, <laughs> I went into this whole thing about uh, a brutal fight for survival begins. Millie Bobby Brown starts opposite Angela Bassett. Here, I'm gonna look at the, I'm gonna look at the trailer and see what she's about here. Okay, what's she saying? Hold on a second. It's Oh wait, now it's playing in my bedroom. Okay. Well she okay, it's like see it's like one of these epic timepieces. I'm Henry. Very pleased to finally meet you, my lady. Oh she, we all are, she says. Okay. Um my under my son underestimates our joy. And if I may say so, your your father has underestimated your beauty and she does a lot of this kind of stuff. It's like one of those old timey movies. Alex loves her shit. I don't love this stuff. Um should you want it or not, your majesty? What is it? Tia, you are liking the dirty movies. Oh, Angela Bassett's like by her side. Okay. Oh, Robin White, right? Looks good in this. Like a lot. Your majesty. See, I love Bridgerton, but this doesn't give me Bridgerton vibes. It's an hour and 49 minutes of my life. 73% match. Should I watch it? I'm gonna watch it for Tia. I'm gonna do it for Tia. I'm gonna do it for Tia. I will tell you this. Mel has tried to get me to watch Dexter for probably since our entire friendship, okay? I tried so hard. I watched like an episode, I like it, it's okay. I like the books, but I don't like the TV show. But like, I'll watch an episode and Mel's like, oh my God, it's so good. I think Mel has watched, she has watched Dexter as many times as she, as Alex has watched Gossip Girl. And, like, this is the thing, right? Just because somebody likes something... I mean, now it's, like, this joke between Mel and I. But just because somebody likes something and they love it so much doesn't mean that everybody else... You know what I mean? Like, but I'm gonna watch it for you. For you, Tia. Is it the number one movie of the week? It probably is. The number one movie is Rebel Moon. It looks like a cartoon or something. Anna is number two. What Jennifer did? I watched that. Woody Woodpecker goes to camp. No, thanks. The Brick Layer, I kind of want to watch that. Six, Mario Brothers, Seven, Glass, Eight, Knocked Up, Nine, oh, Megan, Megan Leaves, or Megan Levy, or something about a dog. And number 10 is Rebel Moon. What's Rebel Moon? Why is it one and 10? Let's see what the TV shows are. Baby Reindeer, I think that's next. I'm going to watch. Number two is Unlocked, I already watched it. Number three is The Circle, Social Media. What? Isn't that like a is it is the circle like it's a uh, what do you call it? It's a um, oh, it's not coming out till the rest of it next week. Oh my God, Bridgerton is coming back though. Actually, in the middle, like May tenth or sixteenth or something. I told Alex last night. Is the circle? It's like a reality show. 
Do you have to have watched the past five seasons? Can somebody let me know that in the comment section below? Okay. And then the Upshaws, number four. Our Living World, Alex is watching that right now. It's number five. OJ, Made in America. I feel like I already watched that. Did we watch that? Oh, was it a documentary? No, I'm not going to watch that. Killing Eve. I heard that was pretty good, actually. Recently added. But there's like three, four seasons, so how is it just recently added? And then Black Sails is number eight. Bad Dinosaurs is number nine. Jimmy Carr, Natural Born Killer. It's like a stand-up comedian. They've had always stand-up comedians lately. People must not be having too much comedy in their life. So... Yeah, so today, I don't, like, I'm going to finish watching Fallout, and then I don't know what I'm going to watch left. Probably some Walking Dead or whatever. Tomorrow, I plan to sleep in, make some videos, and then I got to get ready to take an Uber because we have marriage counseling tomorrow. We haven't had marriage counseling in a while because we had to put it off for, like, the eclipse. He was not down, and then last week I had a hair appointment, and then we were on vacation, and then he was on vacation, so we haven't had marriage counseling. I actually said to Alex on the way to, um... To brunch today, I said, do you have all kinds of issues for marriage counseling tomorrow? And he said, oh my God, I have so many issues. He goes, do you? And I said, yeah, I have so many issues too, which means we have no issues. I said, do you don't have anything? He goes, no. So we'll just probably do like catch up and do some of these questions that we do in there tomorrow. So yeah, so that's tomorrow night. And then I think Tony gets back. Should get back tomorrow night or Tuesday night? Um, and then Cousin Fun Day this week. I was like, well, like, we always, like, on Sundays at brunch, we kind of, like, coordinate our weeks. We don't have tons of stuff going on this week. So, yeah, so there's that. So just be videos this week and reading and as the weather gets a little bit nicer, like, being outside more and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so here's the story. Okay, so that, that, that's the upcoming week. So here's the story, Morning Glory, about across the street. Okay, so yesterday, do you, I think it was while I was vlogging. Do you remember I said something about somebody calling me? I was like, who called me and left me this long message or something like that? So I didn't know who it was. Like, I got off and, like, I thought it was, like, I thought it was something about drama happening, like, honestly, because, like, when I looked at it, I was like, what is that? I couldn't really see because I had my glasses on. And so I was uploading the video, and um, I came out here to check the mail, and I was, like, listening to the message, and it was the president of the HOA. And she left me this long, long message. Now, I, like, have met her, like, once or twice, but, like, just to say hi to, like, I don't really know her. She's very, very nice, okay? But, like... I feel bad for her because I feel like, so this is what happened. I did not understand. So she left me this long message and she was like, Peter, I'm really, really sorry that I can't get a hold of the electric company and yada, yada, yada. These are my favorite, like, I love these women that walk in here. This one woman, it's like these two women and they always dress the same. I'm kind of wondering if it's not like this, like, if they're like a couple and they're like, because she's so, for this one, so friendly to me, it's kind of, they were like deep in conversation, so it's kind of funny she didn't look over here, but she's usually the tall one always looks over here and she always goes, how's Boo? She always asks about Boo because Boo's like out here when they walk by and stuff like that. And she's like the only, like, like Boo like will like go over to the neighbors and stuff, but like he gets real excited when he sees her. I don't know why. And it's so funny, but she's really friendly to Boo. And so she usually always asks, but they're always like dressed like alike. And, um, yeah, cute couple, if they're a couple, but I never, they're always, like, pushing strollers, so I just thought they, like, at first I just thought they were two moms. I don't know why that never occurred to me before until I saw them today, and they were literally head to toe dressed in, like, matching outfits. I've always wanted to kind of, like, like back in the day with, like, Halloween costumes, I always wanted to kind of do that matchy-matchy outfit. Alex was never about that. One year we did that. We were um, lumberjacks for Halloween one year. But other than that, Alex was like, this is the one and only year. And then he said something to me the other day. I couldn't even believe it. This is where, like, people change in relationships and they become people you don't even know who they are. We were, I think it was when we were in Florida, and I said something about, oh, we saw this couple out. And they were, like, in some, like, really, like, cheesy, like, chain link kind of, like, matching outfit, right? Like, this gay couple. And Alex, it was when we were at the Palace Bar, and Alex goes, um, should we wear matchy, should we wear matching outfits? And I was like, no, we're past those days. And he goes, but not even for Halloween. He was like, I think that would be cute if we started doing, like, famous couples for Halloween. I was like, are you serious? And he was like, yeah, I think that would be fun. And I was like, 
you never want to do that. He goes, I know, but now I kind of want to. I was like, you are so turning into me. <laughs> and I'm turning into you. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trading places. <laughs> Um, okay, so she called me yesterday. She left me this long message. It was so nice. She was like, Peter, I am so sorry. She was like, I've called the electric company. I don't know, like, what option to pick. There's not an appropriate option for having them come out here and pick, pick it. And I've called the mayor's council. I mean, she's gone to such lengths, okay? She's like, I've called the mayor's council, and I've called this person, and I've called our, re our state representative. And I was like, I mean, seriously, she has. I'm not even joking about this, right? And, um, she... But she never said why she was calling me, right? Like, I never understood why she was calling me. And I was like, did she just, like, hear me say something in the neighborhood about, like, how I had called it? Like, I didn't get it, right? So I called her back, and I was like, hey. I was like, it's Peter, you know, Mon. She's like, oh, hi, Peter, how are you? And I was like, fine. I was like, because she kept on, like, apologizing in the message. I go, did you think I was mad about that? I go, I'm not mad at all. I just, like, don't understand what's going on. But I'm like, I'm willing to help in whatever way is possible. She goes, oh, no, I didn't think that you were mad at all. I thought you were just calling for your neighbor. She kept on saying her name. And I go, yeah. And she goes, well, then she said the, the, the director of the management company. And I go, oh. And she goes, she, call, she, told me, she called me and told me that you had left a message. Now... This pisses me off, okay? And I, I, I said this to my neighbor across the street. So I called the management company. Okay, we pay the management company to take care of our neighborhood. The managed company, their hands are tied. They don't know what to do because they can't get anybody out here. But they're a management company. They manage like 20 communities, 10 or 20 communities, okay? You would think they might have better options than we have, okay? So I call the management company and leave a message about this which the management company is the one that originally put out the email about the neighborhood and about the electric company coming out here and doing all this kind of stuff. And then the director of the management company calls the president of the HOA and tells the president of the HOA to call me. I don't, that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And I left a very nice message with the director of the HOA or the director of the management company. I was just like, hey, it's Peter Mon. It's such and such. Here's my address. I'm calling for my neighbor across the street. Like, we're really unsure of what to do. Like, if you can kind of like let me know what to do, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was very nice. I just was like, I'm confused. Like, you know, whatever. What, what's our next steps? What can we do here? And so, like, but every person I talked to, like when I talked to the president of the HOA yesterday, she's like, I just don't know what to do. I just guess there's nothing that we can do. So it's just going to stay like that forever? No, 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 You know, and like, when, um, oh, but when I did talk to her, she said, one of the reasons why, I said something about us fixing it ourselves, like, you put that out in the newsletter. And she goes, well, we have to retract that, and we're going to be putting out a statement this week, because one of the things that we found out from somebody that used to work there is if they have stuff around there, there could be wires and stuff underneath there that you cannot touch, so you can't not fix it yourself. I said, so we can't fix it ourselves. The landscapers can't fix it, and we can't get the electric company out here to fix it. And she goes, that's right. And I go, so what do we do next? And she goes, I don't know. And I go, okay. I said, I will call back on Monday. I said, I will call the electric company and I will also be calling the management company. And she's like, oh, you don't need to do that. And I go, mm. she was like worried that I was gonna call the management company. And I said, no, I am gonna call the management company because we are paying the management company a large sum of money to manage our community. Their responsibility is to be the liaison between our community and the outside world. They're not doing that. They're the ones that put the email out and said they were they were contacted. So somebody contacted them and said they were coming out here to dig the ground. So they have a contact there. So they need to call their contact there or whatever. Instead of us calling every favor into state representatives and family members of people that have, you know, whatever. And and my neighbor across the street, I felt so bad for her. She was like, yeah, my hairdresser said that she was uh, friends with um, this hairstylist that she's gone to for like 40 years. She's like, she said that she's friends with this guy that used to be like big up in the electric company. Well, the electric company about five years ago changed. It used to be called Indianapolis Power and Light. It's not called that anymore. And so they like changed it. Well, two years ago, I guess. And so like the people that were big there like... <laughs> two years to 50 years ago, it doesn't even matter. They have, like, nothing to do with it anymore, you know? So, listen, it is what it is, but we're going to get it fixed. And she said to me today, this was so funny, she, she looked at me and she goes, do you know what's different? This is what she did. This is why I'm the moment. And this is why my neighbor, she's the moment. Okay, we're the moment. <laughs> That's my new saying. <laughs> Kenny Moore said that, like, three seasons ago. I don't know why it's cracking me up, but anyway... 
She said, you know what's different between you and I and the president of the HOA? And I go, what? And she goes, we're not going to stop. She goes, we'll keep on calling until they come out here and do something about it. And I go, damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love my neighborhood so much. I love it so much. We are the moment. We are the moment right here, okay? So anyway, so that's what happened. That's what, they, someone come out here and fix 48. Listen, I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh, I did something. Look at me, I did something. 24 to 48 hours. I did something. I thought I did. I thought I had fixed the whole world with all that. They didn't come out here. <laughs> I don't think they drove by or anything. I've never seen this woman before and her dog, but she was like, she got that hoodie up and the sunglasses on and she's like. <sighs> Some people just walk to like, just and enjoy being outside. Like I'm like, kind of like a big walker, but like when people walk by me and stuff like that, when I'm walking, I'm always like, hey, how are you? I mean, I got AirPods and I can't hear them if they're talking to me. But like if they stop or whatever, I'll just like, I keep on walking in place. Yes, I am one of those people because I am the moment. And so I keep on walking in place like that. <laughs> I take my AirPod out. I'm like, excuse me, what? Because if you take your AirPod out, like, you know, it's pauses the book or the music or whatever. So that's what I do. That's what she do. <laughs> So tonight, I think I'm going to take a little walk and then finish Fallout, wait until dark, and if it's not too late, Damsel. <laughs> if it's not too late, then I'll watch Damsel. I'm so excited. Oh my god, I can't wait for Damsel. Tia, I'm telling you right now, if it sucks, you're blocked everywhere. Is it worth it to you? Because I won't have watched it by the time that you watch this vlog tonight. <laughs> oh my god, one well, of the haters is going to love this. Peter threatens follower by saying that if you don't, uh, blah, 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 if you don't, uh, if, if I watch this movie and I don't like it and I'm blind, <laughs> people are so silly, girl. Go go find somebody else and be a moment. It's okay. Listen, I am the moment. You're not. But anyway, um, Tia, are you willing to put it all on the line? Are you willing to put it all on the line? You think that I am going to love Damsel that much? Okay, so if I watch Damsel and I think the movie is a big... Okay, you're blocked everywhere. On every channel, on all on social media, you're done, girl. You're blocked. <laughs> She's like, oh shit, I sent a lot of DMs. <laughs> Tia, I'm joking. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I just come on here and shame you on vid. No. <laughs> another, another hater comment. Peter threatens to shame his followers on YouTube and the people that watch it, which is, oh my god, the battery's dying. But guess what? I brought another battery with me. But before I change the battery, I'll say, and then the people that's actually them commenting to themselves with the same name, like they change their It's all it's one person talking to this to themselves with different names. <laughs> Really excited. They're like, oh my god, he is. We gotta get the word out. Here, let's get the word out. Get the word out. Oh, my new cult. It's coming to you. The camera stopped right when I pointed to it. I should make that my thumbnail. I'm trying to think of a theme song. Who wants a cult? I want the cult. Who wants a cult? Okay, here's our cult. Peter's cult. Well, first you have to love me, obviously, and adore me, and idolize me, and all that kind of stuff. Basically, yeah, like, I'm like Negan in Walking Dead. You have to bow down to me. <laughs> Not! <laughs> we don't expect all that. No, we just, like, wear comfy clothes, and we hang out and watch TV shows and movies. And we have, like, I just imagine, like, a big warehouse, like, if it was, like, the, ap the, the apocalypse, and I was running the, the cult during the apocalypse, and it'd be, like, We'd have like this big warehouse, right, with these huge windows, you know, like the, the old warehouses like in LA and stuff like that. Hey, how are you? Hi. You look so nice. Yeah, we're going out. Where are you going? Binkley's. Oh, I love Binkley's. What are you going there for? We have to check out a, uh, we have to, we're going to go out to eat. We also check out the room for a wedding uh, rehearsal, or not a rehearsal, but a I got it. What do you call it? Wedding show. At Bankley's? Yeah. Okay. We'll have fun. For a couple months from now. So Bankley's used to own a restaurant in Fishers called the Nickel Plate. Okay. Which doesn't exist anymore because they tore out the whole building now. But it was like one of my favorite restaurants. 
But you're talking about Ben Clay's Embroidered Bowl, right? right? Yeah, I love it. Well, have fun. Come on, buddy. You don't need to go. He gets to stay home. <laughs> okay, so I kind of imagine, here's what I imagine for the cult, okay? Now, we got to start planning ahead for the apocalypse, the cult. Okay, so I imagine, like, well, outside, it's a big warehouse. See, like, one of those big old, like, rusted warehouses, like, in L.A., like, outside, you know, like, I don't really know that area of, I did my hair last night. I didn't wear a hat. Can you imagine? Now my head is itching. I used that tribal chimp powder and clay. It looked, it looked cute last night. Um, oh, and I, like I said, I did wear, did I say that already? I did wear that black sweater. We're going to retire. I think what I'm going to think about, so the black sweater is actually this Michael Kors black sweater. It was kind of pricey, I think, but I thought I was only going to wear it once. God knows. I mean, this is what I believe about, I, I say this about like clothes and shoes. Like, let's say if you, okay, let's say if you like buy a pair of shoes and they're $100, right? Okay, if you wear them one time, that's a $100 pair of shoes. But if you wear them twice, you've reduced it. Now you cut it in half. That's $50, right? If you wear them three times, you cut that in half. That's $25, okay? And if you, you keep on doing that, right, until you've like got it down to zero, then you've got the wear out of that. What, it's not a smart way to look at it. I have gotten, listen, I have gotten my wear out of that black sweater. But I actually think what I'm going to do next fall and winter is, because I so love that look with the collar out over the sweater with the, you know, the sleeves. I love that look. That's kind of like my signature look now. And, and, and actually, like I did it last night, and this girl that was like my friend of ours that we saw at the Restoration Harbor thing, she's like, I love this look when you do the, the, the sleeves out. She's like, I think that is so cute. She's like, it's like, it's, she, what'd she say? She's like, it's uh, so very Carl Lagerfeld back in the day. I said, oh, thanks. That's kind of what I was going for with the thing. So anyway, um, so I think what I'm going to do next fall and winter is like go to Macy's and I'm going to get like fine like that or a similar sweater. It's like a cashmere sweater. I'm going to get that in like five colors. I'm thinking like a burgundy, a black, a gray, um, like a electric blue, and then maybe like a moss green. And then I'm going to buy like two or three not button down collared white shirts that are starch, like starchy, but like are like wrinkle free. Like you just wash them dry and then you don't have to iron them, right? So I can go underneath. Because all I really wear them for is this and this, you know? And then like also like light blue ones. And so then I can like, that can be like my go-to outfit for anything that we go to next fall or winter. Don't you think that's so smart? Because I love that look. I think that look is so cute and so sharp. And then I always wear my jeans, like rolled, I cuff them up, like I cuff them up big, like that, like big cuff. And then I wear like just like black socks and then those untamed, uh, what is it, untamed street? Those real heavy Oxfords that I got. I got my wear out of those too. I've worn those quite a bit. I'm so glad. I was so worried because they were really expensive shoes. They were like $400, but I wanted them so bad. I wanted like a really unique pair of like Oxfords. I mean, they're handmade. Like the bottoms of them are wood. They are handmade. They are so beautiful. I have worn them so much. I love those shoes. I actually want to get a brown pair. Well, they have like a cognac colored pair, but I'm not going to do that till next fall probably. Um, so what was I saying about all that? I got real excited about something. Oh, the cult, the cult, the cult. Okay, so when Armageddon happens and we all move into the cult together, okay? Yes, yeah, you can bring your cats. Everybody can bring their cats. You can bring your dogs. You can bring your cats. You can bring your ferrets. You can bring your everything, okay? As long as they're sweet and get along with everybody. So we're all going to move into this big warehouse, right? And then it'll say, like, on the outside of it, it'll have, like, I love the color blue. And I'm also loving the color, like, pink. But, like, either, like, I don't necessarily love, like, a hot pink these days. I kind of like a, like a, calm like a cool pink you know so like I think it'll be like cool pink sign like this you know kind of like a half rainbow or rainbow whatever and then in all blue like bubble letters will say Peter's cult in it and then we'll wear patches that have that pink patches it says Peter's cult on it I'm part of Peter's cult I'm a member of Peter's cult that, wouldn't that be so cute and then okay so then we go in the warehouse and the warehouse is like down in the basement, which is where the bunkers are and stuff like that. Everybody gets their own, like, apartment. So you can, like, move in there with... Maybe some of you don't want to bring your husbands or <laughs> your moms and stuff like that. But you can if you want. Everybody gets their own apartment with their own shower and bathroom and all that kind of stuff, right? But then upstairs, okay, like, on the main floor, which is where all the windows are, the warehouse and stuff like that. But we have them all blacked out and stuff like that. We have them painted pink and blue. Like, but, okay, there's, like, corners. And, like, a corner will have, like, real comfy couches and, like, rugs on the floor over the cement and, like, dog beds. 
beds and cat beds that were in cat, those cat climbing things and things like that. Although I don't like cats because cats are aliens. But listen, if the Armageddon's going to happen, then we're going to have to have some cats there because cats are going to have to take over. So we'll have all these couches and we'll have like in each corner, it'll be like a TV with all these couches around it. It's like maybe some of us are over here and we're watching The Walking Dead and some of us are over here watching Damsel. I probably won't be in that corner watching Damsel. That'll probably be Tia and her kids over there. So, and then I'm over here and I'm like, you know, and then Mel, she's over here, she's watching Dexter and she's crocheting and stuff like that. And then, you know what I'm saying? So like, it'd be different segments and whoever wants to watch Dexter's over there, whoever wants to watch Damsel 15 times in a row can be sitting over there. And then like in the middle, we'll have like a big, just like free uh, fountain pop machine coffee machine, all your treats, you can get there, big, big treat tray, right? It'd be like a gas station, a, a diner, not diner, but gas station, like concession stand with fountain pops and things like that, like that thousand drink thing, right there in the middle. And then everybody can just get all the drinks. And that's what we'll do, we'll just sit around all day long. And then at night, when it's like safe from the zombies and stuff like that, we'll all of us just take one, we'll all listen to the same audiobook and we'll put our AirPods in and we'll just take a walk every night. And then we go, go to bed. We start it all over the next day. It sounds like a pretty fun cult, don't you think? You don't have to believe in anything you don't want to believe in. Things like that. Listen, okay? We just all pitch on our money for fountain pops and stuff like that. You know, listen, if I got 40 cents and, and listen, okay, if I got 40 cents and, and you got 60 cents and it's 99 cents for a fountain pop, listen, we got a fountain pop. We'll share it. You know what I mean? Two straws in one. That's how our cult works, okay? We got each other's backs. We're kind to one another and we got it. We got it going on. And there, and I even helped out the haters because they can make a video. Peter is going to make a call. Yes, I already did. Right there. It's called Peter's Call. <laughs> Come for me all day long. I'm getting that t-shirt that says cult later on. I don't think I'm not. But anyway, where am I at? One time, oh my God, Lord, is it? Oh my God, it's six after five already. What time did I even start? I don't know what time I started today. So yeah, tonight I'm going to watch those shows and I'm going to, now I'm awake. I was a little tired when I first got here, but now I'm kind of awake. So I'm going to start rendering this vlog and then upload that. I feel like I've been vlogging. Did I start at like quarter till? Was it 40? I feel like it was 44. You know, I always remember times. Was it 44? Did I start this at 344? So I've been vlogging for like an hour and 20, oh my God, have I really been vlogging for that long? Okay, so an hour and 20 minute vlog will probably take me, well, I feel like I should at least make it an hour and a half. Should I? Oh my Lord, try to, try to make it to an hour and a half. But an hour and a half vlog would probably take me, let's see, if I get this done by 5.30, it'll be rendered, it'll be ready to go up by six. I'll lay down at six and take a nap. By nine or ten, oh, that yeah, three three hours is about what it would take to upload it. Unless sometimes I'll tell you what happens with the longer vlogs is, I will like upload the whole vlog and it'll take like two three hours to get and then get stuck in processing. It'll say like processing is taking longer than usual or processing video and it gets stuck in processing. When it gets stuck in processing, like if it's if processing it doesn't like what it, it just says processing will begin soon and it does stays there forever. If you're a, a YouTube you know what I'm talking about. If it stays there for longer than five minutes, start uploading the video again. If you start uploading it while it's doing that, it might trigger it and, into processing. But that's one of the tricks I've learned. But typically, if it, it says processing will begin shortly and it's been sitting up there for 10 or 15 minutes, it's not going to ever start processing. It's just stuck. So you have to upload the vlog all over again. Yeah. It's a real shit show. <laughs> it's really fun. So at that point, then you don't really have any, you know, other options than just uploading the video. That happened to me one night last week because I got the video up at like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. Okay, let's read some more of these comments, shall we? Let's see who else. Let's see who's commented while I've been vlogging. You should probably feel pretty speci special. Um, well, Brandy did. She uh, commented five minutes ago. She said, "I watched Baby Reindeer. It was just okay. I also watched Unlocked, Locked, and I really liked it." Oh, okay, so Brandy comments a lot. She said she she it was just okay. Now I'm not really sure I really want to watch it. So that's kind of the thing with Fallout. Like, I'm glad I watched it, but I, I'm not going to be like, I want to watch a show that when I'm, like, done with it, I'm like, damn, that was good. You know, like, I don't think I'm going to be like that with Fallout. Unless something like, like I said, colossal or catastrophic happens at the very end. I kind of almost feel like it's one of those shows that at the very end, it's gonna like go into something else. Like it's gonna like leave it like on a huge cliffhanger, so there has to be season two, is what I think is gonna happen. Amy said 4.30 was my guess. Well, you would have been close to that today, wouldn't you, Amy? She's been around forever. Hey, Amy. 
Um, okay. Listen to this birds. Joy said, I'm gonna try Fallout. Thanks, Peter. Oh, Amy, she, Amy's guessing on every video. She guessed the day before at 4 o'clock. She said, so close, I guess 4 p.m. Oh, Dawn was the one that said, how about Pretty in Pink? I love that movie. Caroline's rust and she's raining all day. Wants to be one of the girls. I love the psychedelic furs, by the way. That psychedelic uh, furs, Pretty in Pink is one of my favorite songs. Stacy said, I'm just finishing this vlog today. I'll DM you some books. That was several, several, seven hours ago. I don't know if I've gotten that yet. I haven't even looked at my DMs today. Um, somebody said, you should live stream your vlogs. It would be fun to chat with you live. I could do like a live stream vlog one of these days. I could do that. Outside with the birds chirping. What would be a good day if I was going to do it? That's the thing. Okay, if like this is because this is the thing with the book club. It's like this is why we've had to just say it's 4 p.m. on Sundays. No questions asked. We're not changing it because then people are like, well, why not 2 o'clock on a Tuesday? Well, why not uh, 10 o'clock on a Saturday? Well, I mean, everybody wants a different time. Okay, so I can tell you right now if I say to you, what would be a good time and day to live stream? I will get 15 answers in the comment section below. But let's just see if we get any kind of consistent answers. And even if I say like, okay, three people said Wednesdays at 5 and I did Wednesdays at 5, the rest of the people would be like... <laughs> Well, I guess I'll try to catch it next time because, you know, I couldn't do it this time. So, I don't know. I do. I feel like I do want to go live one of these days because I haven't in forever. Weekends are probably the best for everybody, right? Oh, somebody said, it's okay, little boo. I get diarrhea when I'm excited, too. Aww. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to read. I wanted to read something by Kayla. Kayla left this comment on here. Okay, Kayla said, this was so sweet. I appreciate this, Kayla. She said, gotta say, I'm impressed with the vlogs. I keep thinking it'll be a day off when I check for the vlog, but then you end up posting, so I will refrain from complaining when you skip a day. Oh, you're so sweet. No, I am. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, well, I'm trying to really think about what is best. And actually, I commented about this on a video yesterday or the day before, and a couple people commented about it. Um, I'm trying to, like, really be considerate of, like, what's best for the people that watch my channels. The thing is, is that I know that most people that watch my channels don't watch all my channels, you know? Like, I think that people probably watch, like, one or two of my channels. Um, some people watch all of them, but not most people. And so, I, I know when I say that, I'll get a couple people, I'll be like, I watch every channel, but most people don't. Most people watch, like, a vlog and a Peterism's video. So... But if I'm like, for some people out there that do watch a lot of my channels, if I post seven videos in one day, that's a lot for people, you know? And usually what I do is, like, I just, like, boom, 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 boom. Like, when the video's ready to go, I post it. So, sometimes I post, like, three videos at a time. And then people are like, can you schedule them out? I'm like, I... That's too much for me to think of. I mean, I could, but not enough people say that. So, anyway. So, I've been trying to think about, like, okay, should I only do three or four videos a week or a day? And go, I mean, other than the vlog, the vlog I'll keep on doing every day. Go about, go back and forth between like, you know, three other videos every single day and whatever. Um, I didn't film a drama video yesterday or today. And, um, well, I didn't really film. Yesterday and today I just filmed a vlog. That was all I filmed. It's been kind of nice. Um, well, yesterday, my, the day got away from me. But today, it's been kind of nice to just be able to relax and whatever. And I filmed a longer vlog. It's, I can film longer vlogs on days that I don't have a lot of other stuff going on. You know what I mean? So, but I appreciate that, Kayla. Thank you. Um, Catley Life was the one that asked me any update on your neighbor's yard situation. Yeah, that was the situation. Um, Kristen said, I have to watch more of Fallout. I really like the first episode, too. I like it. I just wouldn't say it's the best show I've ever watched. Adriana said, LOL, Peter reading my question about sump pump. I genuinely never knew that's what it was. I live in an apartment, so I'm not knowledgeable. Well, I, yeah, I like, I, I know a lot of people don't know what a sump pump is. Um, it was so funny because we were talking about it last night at dinner because one of our friends owns, uh, is a con contractor, a construction company, and I was asking him about, he does a lot of residential stuff. He's kind of pricey. So I was asking him last night about giving us an estimate coming over here. He's talking about our basement, what he could do with our basement, things like that. And he was asking if I have a sump pump, and I said, yeah. And so he was explaining, and I was telling him about what those people said down there the other day, too. Um... 
Somebody said, I live in Alaska, so weed is legal. So happy 420. This was yesterday, because today is the 21st. And then they said, I love how Peter said, do you, boo, do you? Yeah, do you, girl. If you smoke the Mary Jane and you got it handled, happy 420. Um, hello, hello, hello. Okay, somebody said, um, Baby Reindeer is dark. The more I watched it, it looked like really dark. Or watched the, the different trailers for it, it looked really dark. Somebody said, this This comment made me so happy. Nicole said, I, so I said yesterday, she's the only one that responded to this comment on my video. I said, what kind of movie do you want to watch for Peter Does Stuff channel, okay, for next week? Because I'm trying to pick a movie for next week. And I said, something scary, something whatever. And this, I love. And I said something like, or a, like a weird movie. Like, I meant like cult classic, B-level movie or whatever. And this, I love this comment so much. She said, thriller, a classic, or a weirdo movie. <laughs> I don't know why I love that so much. I love the word weirdo, I do. Because, um, you know, I mean, we're all a bunch of weirdos, right? So I love that so much that she put, or a weirdo movie. <laughs> or a weirdo movie. <laughs> Okay, so Nicole, specifically for you, I want to know, what would you, give me an example of a weirdo movie in the comment section below, so that I, like, if you say, like, Pretty Woman, I'm just using this as an example, but if you say, like, Pretty Woman is a weirdo movie, then, like, I kind of, I get, but is, is weirdo, is it a weirdo movie because of what? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I need to know why, how you define a weirdo movie, because <laughs> I love that. I love the word weird and weirdo anyway, because we all just are, aren't we? We're all just a bunch of weirdos. Diana said, we are on a cold, cozy porch with no weeds. Peter's a teddy bear. Vlog time. Love you always. Aw, love you always, too, Diana. And she said, uh, take care and stay safe. Enjoy your evening and your Sunday brunch. Love you, too, Boo and Alex. And she put all these uh, emojis, which I love. Um, somebody said, uh, Shannon Smith said, he saw Steve. Oh, my God. That's Alex's second time, actually. I mean, we've seen Steve Aoki live. But Alex went, okay. What's the one he wanted to go to this year? Tomorrow Land. We went to Tomorrow World where he went with Fufu several years ago. And the buses got stuck because of the rainstorms. God, this has been like probably before I was on YouTube, actually. And so the buses got stuck and Stevie Oki came on the bus and Alex has this picture with his arm around him and stuff like that. So it's actually the second time that Alex has like met Stevie Oki. And he's met Cascade like three or four times. He loves many of them. Um... Oh, Tia, here she is getting cute. She said, LOL, I know you'll like it. Good idea. I'll conspire with Alex, LOL. I'm going to watch that damn movie, and it better be good. I should make Alex watch it, too, and he'll be like, oh, my God, I love it. So good. Okay, this comment cracked me up so much from Libby. Libby said, first of all, I have to say that my mom, I went to, I went to school with this girl named Libby, and whenever I would tell, it was drive my mom crazy, because this must have been a commercial, like, when she was growing up, but whenever I would say something to my mom about this girl, Libby, she'd say, Libby, 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 on your label, 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 I would like it, like it, like it, on my table, table, table. Do you guys remember that commercial? I do not remember that. Okay. But Libby said, hello, hello, writing this for my new iPad, I splurged today. Does that make me rich? Because <laughs> who commented on it? Oh my god, Cozy Paper Crafts said, great, now it's time to be in a rich person's vlog. Okay, so you got it. Because when I was in Arizona, somebody commented and was like, oh, you're renting an Airbnb and you bought a new iPad. This is a rich person's vlog. I love that so much. Okay, um... Oh, Glamon said, it's been a very rough day for me. I wasn't expecting a video today, but here you are. Just what I needed. Thank you. And Charlotte said, hope you're uh, doing okay, friends. Sending you lots of love. Sending you lots of love and positivity and hoping that things are better today. Um, Julia said, we have been in frost warning here for three days. Nebraska is not... Nebraska, y'all get the, the snow and stuff in Nebraska. We don't even get any of that anymore. Um... Okay. I'm trying. These were from like the days before. All right. Well, I'll get off here now, I guess. Did I make it to an hour and a half? I don't even know. I don't think I did. But if I did, woo! We're moving on up to the three hour vlog. Does anybody know exactly how long I have to make the vlog to be the longest vlog ever? Because I, I said the last vlog, I was like, it was the longest vlog ever, and everybody was like, mm, actually, no, that wasn't. You did a vlog that was longer. I think Troy said that. Because Troy, Troy would know. Because one time I said, um, 
I was like, I forgot my old, do you guys remember my old outro that was like eight? If you haven't watched my, this vlog, like if you just started watching like the last couple months um, or the last year, I used to do this outro that was ridiculous. It was like literally like a 10 minute outro. And I forgot, I, I cannot right now for the life of me, I cannot remember what I said in the outro. But Troy like messaged me the whole thing, which was so sweet. So Troy probably remembers, but anyway, um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday and that um, if, if and nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I hope that you guys are getting rested, relaxed, refreshed, and renewed, rejuvenated, and renaissanced for the week ahead. And um, what's one more word? Repooped? No. <laughs> I don't know what one more. Uh, re the moment. <laughs> <laughs> that you're that you're getting red the house down boots no that you are um the moment this week you are every one of us is the moment this week just when you look in the mirror before you go to work go i am the moment <laughs> and if you don't know what that means it's okay none of us does um none of us do <laughs> she do but none of us do Okay, remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want, or your weekend, if, or, well, it's too late to start your weekend over. Sorry, it just is. Those are the rules. But if you need to start your week over tomorrow, you can on your day. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And just do it to be nice and put some positivity out there in the world. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. Like I always say, you might be putting a smile on their face. You might be changing their day for the better. You might be the only phone call or text message they get for the day. And you might be giving them some hope. You don't know. Also, be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. And most importantly, be kinder to yourself and love yourself a little bit more. Because if you're kinder to yourself, you'll be kinder to, your, to others. And if you love yourself more, then you will love others more as well. And also, if you're kinder to yourself and you love yourself more, life is just easier and more enjoyable. And that's ultimately the goal, right? And to put out good into the world and to live a great life and be a role model of that to other people and to be a good person and try to live a right life. So I love you guys. Um, I will, I hope you had a great weekend, a magically amazing weekend. Here is to the best week ever, the last week, a full week of April. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.